Good morning. My name is Guang Tim, and uh, I'm from the University of Derby. I'll be presenting this morning on neurofuzzy control of the X4 flyer. If you're wondering what the X4 flyer is, then this is a picture of the X4 flyer. It's a small unmanned helicopter. And uh, as you can see from the picture, it has four rotors mounted on the cross frame. It's symmetric in nature, and that makes the dynamics of the vehicle a little simpler than most of other helicopters. It carries a payload which normally would be a camera or any other th thing like a robotic arm, depending on the mission to be accomplished. Now, quadrotor helicopters, as it's often called, are used for so many things, for military and civil missions, S from search and rescue to surveillance to monitoring fires and even the weather so many other things that you can do. But they are mostly used where it is dangerous or inaccessible for human beings. Now control of this vehicle is achieved by varying the speeds of the four rotors. And that means changing the lift forces, depending on the direction you want to go. Now if you speed up or slow down individual or pairs of the rotors, you can initiate a roll, pitch, or yaw, which could move it to any position you want. Now the research here is aimed at demonstrating a consistent way to develop a controller, a robust adaptive controller for the X4 flyer using fuzzy logic and neural networks. Now the combination has come because there is a need to give it some form of human reasoning and then the ability to learn like a human being. The first step in control engineering is modeling and simulation and here it shows that there's need to develop a consistent or a faithful mathematical representation of the system, which is normally made up of differential equations. And these differential equations describe the motion of the helicopter or the rates of change of the angles or the position with time. And then in the simulation, you can also predict where the helicopter will be given certain inputs at a particular time. The next step is the use of CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics to analyze the wind flow effects on the helicopter. Now, because it's going to be flown outdoors, the major disturbance is likely to be the wind, which would push it off course and uh, stop it from actually doing what it is supposed to do. Now, after that, the controller design comes up and data generated from the modeling and simulation and from the CFD analysis would lead to the controller development because the data will be used to train the neural network component of the controller. After that, it is installed and tested on the helicopter. Now, the next slide would just show you a simple demonstration of what actually happens, how the controller reacts to a situation it finds. If you're moving from one point to the other, and uh, yeah, that's the helicopter there. We assume it's moving there and then you encounter wind as a disturbance. Now it's likely to push it off course, showing the resultant motion there, which will make it deviate from the planned path. But then the controller, the onboard controller, is able to, first of all, try to reject the disturbance or quickly recover from it. And that's it. The controller action brings it back to the normal, I mean, the planned path and then keeps it going until it gets to the destination. Now, I would round up by saying this control system is going to be really very cheap to, to obtain because it can be fastened to any existing quadrato helicopter frame. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.